Welcome back to Dav Twang. I'm Dave. So we've got a um, minor sounding progression here, minor uh, center um, in this piece, and the chords are D minor. He holds it for maybe four measures. Easy tempo, laid back. Um, so, kind of plug into our, our what we call the twang method sometimes on this channel. Um, the the basic components that make up a piece of music: chords. We just went through those. Um, then melody, or you know where we're going to. Kind of, and not necessarily rules, but ideas of note sequences and scales and things that we can use over that progression um, that are going to be uh, fit well, but also be interesting. And sometimes we don't always stay on just the same plan, or the plan might include a couple of different approaches. This is going to be one of those. Um, but we've got one main pathway that's featured in that intro. So if you like that sound, we'll start with that. Um, and then additional components along with progression, chords, melody, um, rhythm, timing elements, uh, the tempo. And um, so we'll try to address all of those things in this lesson, which gives you a good uh, a solid, you know, uh, um, program for creating your own um, improvisations, whether you're using one of my loops or uh, other loops that you find on YouTube or making your own stuff. So, we got our chords. Now, melody-wise, um, the main thing that I'm doing in that intro is a Dorian sound. So Dorian is if you take the notes in a major key and you start, say, the Do, Re, Mi scale, but you start on the second degree of that major scale and play from that note to the next octave. Okay? Don't want that to confuse you. Um, for example, and this will be a very good example <laughs> for this piece, uh, very fitting. I'm um, going to kind of give it all away all at once here, I guess. Uh, is if we're playing a C major scale. But we start on D, the second degree of that. That's the Dorian sound, okay? So our first chord is D minor. Well, let's try that out. Um, I kind of already spelled it out there a little bit, but let's, we, our, our ear has to be the real judge, right? So let's try it out first. Just if that Dorian... The continuum of notes there, it should still work even if we start on the C. In that that D, uh, uh, you know, structure more, or between the D's. Okay, well that's 
got a nice sound to my ear. Um, so we're really going to, you know, kind of stick to that plan. And when you go to that, that A minor, if you think of that in that kind of C major context, I'm not going to tell you all of these. Maybe somebody put it in the comments. If we're going to say that this is in C, remember there's usually more than, well, almost always more than one way to identify a, a to um, 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 establish a theory for the key that we're in. Some songs change keys throughout the song, too. But if we're going to go with this C major th theory, which our Dorian, D Dorian fits into, um, and what chord would these two be? In other words, what would our progression be? And I'll start you off with this would be the two chord. Um, the one being C. That two minor chord would be the two chord. So your homework on this, and see if somebody can put this in the comments. Um, what would the progression be numerically for those three chords, okay? Well, there's a little uh, side work for you. So let's get into this Dorian thing um, and some other ideas. Now that we have kind of a basic plan of, of what scale we're going to use, um, other elements that are musically stylistic, dynamics, accenting things, resting and making phrasing that's more um, interesting, or in this case, kind of laid back, pulling back a little bit and allowing space where we're not playing. Um, and another one is uh, repetition. Let's start with some repetition. So if I pick, say, a couple few notes out of this, this D Dorian. <laughs> Okay. Just kind of right on the spot and just kind of dwell on those. Put it in a different order, maybe. Letting the chords change behind the melody. Instead of chasing around the chords, I'll do the same thing when that chord change comes. Makes sense? Do another example. that I just did, I, our old friend, right, none other than minor pentatonic, in this case D, so that's another, you kind of, you get so, so established with your pentatonic playing that, you know, any tune is going to have portions or sometimes the complete progression. Um, where a pentatonic scale will work really well with it. And you kind of get so used to that sound that when you come across it, I wasn't really planning on doing that, but just kind of fell into it right there. So the things that we've done so far, besides reviewing the 
learning the progression itself and the scale that we're using, D Dorian, um, are that idea of picking a, a melody and playing it across the chords and letting the chords change behind the same notes. That has a really nice effect in a lot of um, situations. And then I mentioned as I was playing there briefly, like, you know, connecting a few different positions. So if D Dorian's going to be our thing here mostly, um, you know, map that out in a couple places. I'll put a, a diagram, you know, up here and in the uh, description section of, um, you know, a couple of positions, at least one. Um, but, you know, map that out for yourself and remember to, to use that continuum idea. Okay, so it's... <laughs> to go below try to get into the the sound of those notes regardless of where you stop and start not just on c or in between c and and c and d and d and so forth so you know take it easy doing that and if you if you know the way to get your ear acclimated to that is to really map out one octave maybe somewhere and and play that for a while until you you it really sinks in and then you start to you can start to move around different parts of the neck and just kind of fish for them. If you hit a wrong note, don't worry. That's part of the process of learning it because your ear will say, oh, it's, it's one fret down from that. Or don't try to rely completely on visual memorization. So something like this. Let's say we're going... two octaves if you go through this whole position but mm, that's kind of cool starting on you know it's not a chord tone well it is for the d minor much theory when you're doing that to just start landing on some really good um, chord tones and extensions what we call extensions of chords that aren't just the root the third and the fifth but you know maybe it's the the ninth tone or something I don't want to get into you know trying to you know mortar all that into your thinking all at once but when you hear that real colorful you know, tone like that, you know, hang out there and, and then see if it will last if you stretch that over the other chord. You know, I really like that F. It happens to be the, the third in the D minor. So, so of course, it's going to, you know, fit right in with that chord. But when you go to that, um, A, I'm not going to do the analysis on all of these. That A minor, you know, you're, you're, you're really kind of suspending that there. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, you know. So let's just start on that. Kind of 
do some bluesy licks and you know some minor pentatonic stuff if 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 it's appropriate um and then a little bit of that diatonic sound and that that modal sound you know and, and use use those um um that kind of the by diatonic i mean a, a scale that has seven notes right one of the modes or a major scale perhaps um versus pentatonic which of course is reduced to five specific notes within one of those sequences um I like to use the diatonic stuff to kind of connect my positions between pentatonics. <laughs> that sounds a lot more complicated than it really does. Something like this. Sometimes you can do some licks that involve both. Damn, that was a little sloppy on my fingering there, but, um, uh, you know, Dorian. I didn't leave anything out that was critical there to understanding what we just did. Um, if I did, or if there's something, a specific question that you have, um, you know, hit me up in the comments and, and, you know, ask a specific question about it. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that because I, I, I feel like the way I had this one mapped out, I was really going to try to kind of stay out of the way and get you going with those couple of key concepts and let you really explore it and then see, you know, how folks do and hopefully communicate with you about it a little bit um, over the next few days. All right. Let me know how you're doing. Appreciate you. Talk to you later.